Hi everyone, welcome to Photoshop. This um, is the main window of Photoshop. Um, you'll notice up here along the top, it's a tab software so that these tabs show the files that I already have open on the main workspace. As you can see, there's a bit of variety, um, ones that I'll use later on to demo with. Um, now, up here along the top menu bar are the menu tabs. Um, each menu will have specific um, items in it that we can use. Um, you'll see the file menu, the edit menu. One of the most important ones, of course, is the image menu. Um, especially with photographs or images open, um, the adjustments opens up a whole range of actions, Photoshop actions, that we can use to improve our photos. Now, um, before we go any further, I'm just going to remind you how to open a file in Photoshop. Um, if you haven't got access to Adobe Bridge, then the next best way is to just go File and Open. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. Now this is a dialog box that opens up. You can see open in the top left hand corner. So I just have to navigate my way down to find the file that I'm going to use. Where was it? Let's see. I've forgotten which one I was going to demo. Here we go. This one here. And then once I've clicked on it, I just click open and it will open it in Photoshop. Okay, now while um, all the rest of the photos that I've already imported have been prepared, this last photo the one just opened, hasn't been prepared for the next step. And what I mean by that is that I want to make sure that all my files are about the same size, they're the same resolution, and they've all been checked for their tone balance. Okay, so this one hasn't been, so I'll just demonstrate that now. That's image, adjustments, and levels. Now, that's the Levels dialog box that's opened up. And this here is known as a histogram. It's simply a, a graphic which shows the range of tones and how much of that tone exists in the picture. Now you'll notice that this is absolute black down this end, this is absolute white here, and this is mid-gray. Can you see that um, most of the picture is around the mid-gray area. There's lots of content that's around that tone. The lighter end of mid-gray. Can you also notice that there's missing tone? That the tone curve ends a long way before absolute white. So one of the things I can do to make the photo look better is to move that up to the bottom of that curve and at the other end too, the black, the curve ends before it gets to the black. So to repair that curve, I can move that up. Now, can you notice here, as I move that further into the black area, that this is getting very, very dark. Um, that's the darkest part of the picture. But I really would like that sky to be dramatic. I might have to do something about that later. So I'll just go to there. And as you can see, if I go to my preview tick and untick it, that shows me what the photo was like. This shows me what it will be like if I press OK. And that's a big improvement. It was a very dull image prior to that. Now it's got a little bit of life and a full tone curve. So I'll just go OK. 
But what I'll do is I'll reopen that same window. So that was Image, Adjustments, Levels. Now you see what it's done? It's pulled the tone curve apart so that now those tones are still where they were, but we've got a full range of tones from black to white. So I'll just cancel that one. Now, last of all, um, in this particular episode is image size. Now, I'm going to be selecting bits and pieces of different images, and I'm going to, this one's already been selected, Ginger, she's all ready to go. You can see that the um, those black and white squares represent um, transparency. So she's already been cut out, ready to sort of stick somewhere. Um, all of these pictures I'm going to be selecting parts of them and then copying and pasting them onto other parts, uh, other photos. So um, we have to make sure they're all about the same size. So here's a background that I intend to use. If I just go up to the image menu again, but this time going to image size, and that opens up this window. Now you can see that I've prepared these earlier. I'm going to make these about A4, A4 in size, and 240 resolution. Um, notice that resample is ticked here. That means that I can change these and they won't keep on changing behind my back. So if I wanted to make that bigger, maybe 40 wide, it just goes ahead and does it. It doesn't change the resolution. So make sure resample's ticked and you can change the size of these how you like. I'm just going to cancel that because that was the right size. And I'll go back to this image, which um, I may want to use later on. Um, again, image, image size. Now you can see that this one's resolution, this is straight out of the camera. I haven't done anything to this image. So it's resolution 72. So if I'll click in there and make it 240, the same as the other image. But look at that. It's still two and a half meters high. I only need it 30 high. So I'm going to put 30 in. So that's basically the same size as the other image that we just saw before. And I'll just go OK. It makes it look smaller, but if I go Control-0, Control zero makes photos fit into the picture. Control plus, by the way, allows me to zoom. Control minus allows me to zoom out. Control zero makes it fit into the picture. Okay, so all of those photos should be basically the same size. So image, image size, no, this one hasn't been done either, so I need to make that 240 and about 30 wide. So the maximum dimension is 30. This one, image, image size. Oh, they're all over the place. So this was good, 240, 30, and OK. Ginger, image, image size. No, she's the right size. She's ready to go, so I'll just cancel that one. The ground, image, image size. It's ready to go. Cancel that one. The cockatoo, image, image size. 240. I could make that a bit bigger. Uh, so I'll make it 30 wide. OK. And control zero. It was a good enough photo. It's handled the enlargement a bit. And then that last one, image, image size, 240. That one's small too. So I'm going to make that 30, just so that they're all the same size. And then control zero to make it fit the screen. So that's um, a bit of a summary of how to set up for um, compositing. I've got the images that I'm going to be selecting and using. They're all the same size, and I've checked the levels on each one of them. 
Um, everything else can be done later on when we've combined the works. Um,